In this video, I want to talk about three important tests for normality. And remember that it's important that we have normal errors if we have a small sample size. So the first test which we're going to talk about is called the Jacquet-Berra test. And the idea behind the Jacquet-Berra test is that for a standard normal distribution, the skewness is equal to zero and the ketosis is equal to three, actually for a non-standard normal as well. And the idea with the Jacques-Berra statistic is that we form a statistic which we call JB, and that's equal to N over six times S squared, where S is the sample skewness, plus one over four times K minus three, all squared, and it just so happens that under the null hypothesis being true, then this is chi-squared distributed with two degrees of freedom. So the idea behind this particular test is if we were to draw a graph of a sort of chi-squared distribution with two degrees of freedom, then it looks something like this. So the idea is that if we sort of get a value for this particular statistic, which is a long way away from zero, so let's say we get up here, then it's very unlikely that that would have come about if we did actually have a chi-squared distribution with two degrees of freedom. So how might we get a value which is somewhere like here? Well, the idea is that if the skewness, the sample skewness is particularly different from zero, then this value, when you square it, gets quite big, so that sort of is pushing us that way. And similarly, if we have a sample ketosis, which is significantly different from three, that of a normal distribution, then that's also pushing us in this direction. Then if we have both of these things happening, then it's very likely that our data didn't come from a chi-squared um, distribution with two degrees of freedom, so we would reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so that's the first test we're going to talk about. The second test is what we call the Shapiro-Wilk test. And it's a slightly different test to that of the Jacques-Berra test in the, the way in which it works. I'm not going to sort of write down the explicit form of the statistic for this particular test. But the idea is that you compare the what we, what we call the normal percentiles or normal quartiles um, with the actual sample percentiles. So the y-axis here is the sample percentiles and the x-axis is the normal percentiles. And if the sample is actually normally distributed, then the idea is that these sort of observations should lie on a sort of 45 degree line where sort of y equals x because the sample percentile should coincide with the normal percentiles. And the idea with this test is that we basically compare for our sample the sample percentiles with the normal percentiles and if they sort of veer off as I'm sort of indicated here then the idea is that the sample percentiles haven't been generated from a normal process so then we would reject the null hypothesis that both data sets represented normally distributed data. Okay and then the final test which we're going to talk about is actually a more general test but you can use it to test for normality and it's called the kolmogorov um, Smirnov test. And the idea with the kolmogorov Smirnov test is, is not massively dissimilar to that of the um, Shapiro-Wilk test, although the idea here is that you look at the sort of CDF that you might expect to get from a normal distribution. So if we were to look at a CDF from a normal distribution, is the idea is that it would look something like that and this sort of x-axis here just represents our x variable. And um, so that's the CDF which we would get theoretically from a normal distribution. And the way in which I've drawn it here, there isn't that much difference between the sample CDF and the normal dis distribution CDF. So we would then not reject the null hypothesis that both um, data, well, that the errors are normally distributed. Whereas if we got a sample CDF, which looked perhaps something like, uh, if I just get a color, perhaps look something like this, then the idea is that that's the sort of distance between these two data sets is quite large, and so, or these two distributions is quite large rather, so then we would reject the null hypothesis in this particular example. So I've talked about these three different tests for normality of our errors, so when should we use each specific one? 
Well, the answer is there isn't a hard and fast rule, although some studies suggest that the Shapiro Wilk test is better than the Kolmogorov Shmernov test in small sample sizes. So you can still use the Shapiro Wilk test when the sample size is less than 50, whereas the Kolmogorov Shmernov test, ideally, you need larger sample sizes. Um, and the Jacobera test it is by all accounts, quite a good statistic to use, is quite different to the shapiro wilk and the Kolmogorov smirnov test. Um, but the sort of downfall of the Jacobera test is that it sometimes isn't that sensitive to data in the tails of the distribution. Um, but in principle, what we end up doing is that if we have a sort of reasonable sample size, then we sort of compute all three of these statistics or to carry out each three of these tests rather, and we look for a consensus amongst all three of these tests, or even there are even more, more tests which I haven't defined here. Um, but the idea is that you generally get a consensus across each of these different tests. 